What is up, homies? Welcome back to another reaction from Heroes Reforged. We are reacting to the brand new trailer for Dune. Obviously, you notice Hector's not here. Hector did a reaction of this trailer on the Nerdist channel because he also read the book, and we actually have not read the book, so I've seen a lot of the David Lynch version of Dune, but it's been a long time since I've seen it, so it might be a time for a refresher. But I am excited to see this movie because I'm a huge fan of Denis Villeneuve. The first trailer was awesome, looked really, really cool. So I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. I'm also going into this movie knowing that there is some historical baggage with this film that a lot of people have been talking about online uh, rightfully so you know that's kind of like where I lie is I'm a big fan of the director I'm a big fan of you know whatever movie he puts out but I'm also very aware of the stuff that people are talking about online but I am looking forward to seeing this trailer and kind of like giving us a little yeah. bit more of the story and so I don't really know how the big the difference is going to be I have no like zero zero information coming into Dune I don't even know the <laughs> drama I thought Peter Jackson was was directing this for the longest time so so I'm just like, I'm excited, but no, uh, <laughs> I have zero information. I haven't read the books. I don't know any of the internet drama. Like I'm just, I'm in it and I'm coming in fresh and uh, I've been hearing good things about this trailer, but I don't know what I'm coming into. So yeah, Shall man, I'm, I'm ready to do this whenever you are. All right, here we go. My planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. Rolling over the sands, you can see spice in the air. Ooh, they're getting high all the time. Ravage <laughs> our lands in front of our eyes. Damn. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. Baptiste. Got some Drax action? Okay. Yeah. Mmm. A boy. <laughs> Duncan, can I trust you with something? No more. Yep. Always, you know that. I've been having dreams about a girl on Arrakis. I don't know what it means. Dreams make good stories. But everything important happens when we're awake. Hey, you. You want some muscle? I did? No. <laughs> yeah, Timothee Chalamet is, uh, there is no call. We do not, answer. not the most, uh, there is no I mean, he's a kid, so what do you expect? Yeah, he's a kid. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. <laughs> the Emperor asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. House Atreides accepts. I know you. There's only a thing in my mind. You need to face your fears. Come with me. You need to be ready. Okay. You never met Harkness before. They're not human, they're brutal. The Duke's son sees too much. This is I do. Kill him. Morton Joe again! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Damn. Get everything with guns <clears throat> off the ground. Go. This is an extermination. They're picking my family off one by one. Wow. Let's fight like demons. How much? How many different facial hairstyles does Jason Momoa go through in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> he got a buzz cut. He got the yeah. beard shaved. <laughs> I'm so excited for Oscar Isaac and Rebecca Ferguson in this movie. Yeah. He's called to it. Oh, the sandworms. Wow. This will be the only thing I needed you to be. Wow. My son. If anything happens, will you protect Paul? With my life. Whoa, what the hell? What was that? Yeah. Did you get stabbed by a vibroblade or something? Yeah. Javier Bardem. Oh, yeah. Javier Bardem's barely been in this trailer. So Look at those so sand far. ninjas. What the heck? Oh, dang. Oh, that was him. What? <clears throat> Damn. Damn. Damn, dude. Wow. Those vocals were aggressive at the end there. Yeah. 
Man, that's crazy. <laughs> I I feel I feel like I'm watching uh, something that I need a lot of context for. Yeah, because I feel like there was so much being shown, and I feel like if you're a reader of the franchise or have been following it, that you're freaking out just like we do on all the other trailer yeah, yeah, yeah. reactions that we yeah. do, right? But I feel like right now there's so much that I don't know that I don't know that I'm missing too. Yeah, I feel I feel that way too. Not not having read the book, and you know, again, like I talked about earlier, I'm going into this movie as a big fan of science fiction, fantasy, Denis Villeneuve. Right. Like, I like so, so many of the actors in this movie. You know, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, J Jason Momoa, mm -hmm. Zendaya, Timothee Chalamet. Like everybody in this movie is uh, is is like world class actors. Heavy hitters. So, yeah. The one thing I have seen people talking about on the internet is they're already talking about the box office. A potential of this movie and it's tough when it comes to a director like Denis Villeneuve because he's done excellent movies I don't think there's mm -hmm. been a single movie he's done that I have not liked you know mm -hmm. even Arrival I'm not a super mega fan of Arrival but I love everything else that he's done Sicario is like one of my favorite movies of all time so is uh, mm -hmm. Prisoners but a lot of people are talking about the box office because this is technically one of two movies right now yeah They're doing the first half and then I imagine it's probably based on how well the second movie does or this this movie does that they'll green light the second one because as far That's as so i know weird. yeah they did not they did not shoot those movies back to back or simultaneously you know blade runner 2049 did not do as well as warner brothers had hoped it would have done at the box mm -hmm. office some people were surprised by that some people were not surprised by that you know blade runner when it came out in 1982 it was not a huge financial success it's a cult classic now it's regarded now as it is, one yeah. of the yeah mm -hmm. best sci-fi films of the of, of all time, if not the eighties alone, it's tough. Like I want to go into this movie and I want it to be as successful as possible because mm -hmm. I would just based on the trailer, I love the look and feel of the movie and I love the sci-fi fantasy epicness to it. So I want this to do incredibly well because I want to see more films come out of it. And I mm -hmm. feel like it's a little too early to try to guesstimate, you know, what will this do at the box office? I feel like the conversation is always so skewed towards the financial success of a movie and not mm -hmm. enough people are talking about like, well, the story, what's the, what's the unique thing exactly. about the story? What are the exactly. unique things about the visuals? It's got so much visual goodness in it and mm -hmm. the visual effects look so incredibly well done. And he right. is that type of filmmaker who meticulously crafts every single shot the movies he's done previously are a huge indicator of the quality of the film we're gonna get i i agree the trailer looks the visuals look spot on i, I me as a casual viewer mm -hmm. not highly invested in dune or the director there was uh, only a few things that visually cued me into differences between this world and any other sci-fi future you know world or you know science fiction universe yeah um i think i think that's that's what might be the tough sell for a casual viewer like me i know that people like you vouching for it and and all the hype that i've heard around this movie uh is enough to draw me in to definitely give this movie a shot but what mm -hmm. sucks is hearing this that they are not green lighting the second one until this one does financially well it just it reminds me of the dumb Hollywood stuff. It's probably what you were talking about earlier, Adam, that, yeah. that they won't let a director, especially one that you hold in such high regard, do their thing until they prove their record at the box office. Mm -hmm. I know that's the, the nature of Hollywood, but it really does not help the story i don't know if a director can confidently end a story if they're not guaranteed that they can finish it or if they're not guaranteed that it will even happen right. in the long run and so i can only imagine how frustrating that is as a you know ex vfx artist slash hollywood person <laughs> yeah that like yeah you don't get to finish your project that sucks you know and yeah does does that take the wind out of your out of your sails if if you're not able to do it like what does that do for your team what does that do for morale it's just right it's very strange to me uh but i guess just because i'm such a huge lord of the rings fan i don't know if anything like lord of the rings will ever happen again you know having a, a studio give that kind of confidence and money to a yeah filmmaker and honestly peter jackson at the time wasn't a super well-known director at the time either that was super uh, ambitious to be like yeah, yeah not fairly not new but definitely untested for that kind of a movie to be like yeah uh yeah sir we'll give you i don't know how much was 300 i don't know how much the, all three of those were but yeah yeah you know, we're gonna give you all that money and confidence and we're gonna let you shoot them all simultaneously and we're right. gonna let you you know release them 
one year after the other for three years. I'm like, it yeah, doesn't happen as much un- anymore. That's unheard of. And what sucks is that I feel like a project like this should have that kind of a green light. Cause I'm, mm. like I said, super casual, but I know that Dune has a huge fandom cause I've been hearing about it so much yeah. all over Twitter and just any fan space that you go into, you hear of diehard Dune fans. Mm-hmm. And I hope that the diehard Dune fans are happy with this. Right. I hope that they all show up in droves because it looks interesting enough. Like to me, it had inklings, little small little hints of what Lord of the Rings did back in the day, but not fully there. And maybe that's sure. why, because they didn't really give it full confidence to just handle, be a full finished project from start to go. Denis Villeneuve has also been one of those directors like Christopher Nolan, who's been very outspoken about Warner Brothers shifting a lot of their release slate to HBO Max. And you know, now that we're, well, we don't know what the end of the year is going to look like. But as of right now, we're in a place where seeing this movie in October is doable for for me for example i'm i definitely 100 percent want to go see it opening night in imax because that's that's what the director intended the movie to be yeah a giant movie like this there's no way watching it at home is going to give you the same experience yeah. or like heart pounding thrills or like anything just you have to see this on the big screen i want to go see this in a film opening night mm-hmm. in imax the whole nine yards because I totally agree with you, you know, I mean, and we both have pretty nice TVs and nice sound system setups, but even so, to me, for a film like this, it really is almost like requiring you to go to the movie theater. And I know that's not the case for everybody because, you know, everybody's mm-hmm. in different financial situations. Some people can't afford mm-hmm. to take, mm-hmm. you know, four people to a theater. Like, that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. But for mm-hmm. me personally, I'm like, this is a must-watch theatrical experience. I don't, I don't want to say necessarily that I think this movie will drive subscribers to HBO Max. I think there will be for sure. I don't think it's going to be like Black Widow, Disney Plus numbers. Right, but I right. think a lot of people who are existing users, and I would actually say that the advantage of HBO Max is the fact that you don't have to pay extra to watch the movie. It just comes free on the service. I think that's a huge draw for a ton of people. So I really do hope that it gets the viewership that that they're hoping for. And yeah, I mean, behind closed doors, maybe they've said like, look, as long as it passes this threshold, we will green light a sequel. Great. But I really do hope that it does well, not for any other reason other than I want Denis Villeneuve to have more opportunities to make more movies. We'll yeah, see, but yeah. I'm excited to see the we'll story. See. And uh, I'll probably go back and I'll revisit Lynch's Dune because they just released it uh, through Arrow Video in 4K. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I want to pick that one up. And I, I do want to give it a rewatch because I've heard from people, yeah. and again, not having read the book, I don't know this, but I've heard that Dune f- from him is very much... It's the least Lynch film that he's made because it's just straight up trying to adapt the book. I'm always intrigued by that, and I'm intrigued to see how Denis Villeneuve puts his own spin on it. So, we'll yeah, see. yeah, yeah. I gotta, wa- I gotta watch that. Then now I feel like I have watch to watch it. it so, yeah, <laughs> gotta do, do it. We're gonna have to do a movie night. We're gonna have to do a movie night. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a lot of fun. Maybe guys, we'll do, uh, maybe we'll do it with the with the uh, the patrons or the the Discord Ooh, people. Who knows? That's that's who knows. Uh, Mm, that's, a good idea, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I yeah. like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let us know in the comments below what you thought about this trailer for Dune. Are you excited for it? What are you looking forward to the most? If you read the book, is there anything from the book that you hope remains in this film? And uh, yeah, just super excited to experience this with you guys. So let us know. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next reaction. Bye.